and sick. James, his sister, Sally and Mark, their BFF, best friend forever, were bored. They had played all day, but now that it was dark and difficult to see, they had nothing to do. They couldn't play soccer because they couldn't see the ball. They didn't want to go inside and play a game because it was a beautiful springtime night and they liked to be in outside, especially after having to play inside all winter long. They just didn't know what to do and it was a little too early for them to go home. I guess I'll just go home, Mark said in a sad voice. Oh, come on, replied James. We still have time for another game of, of something. Then Sally said, I have an idea. Let's play hide and seek. I was just going to say that, James said. Yeah, I'll bet, replied his sister. You always say you were thinking of whatever I think of. She snapped. Do not, James said in a loud voice. Do too, yelled Sally. Mark just looked down at the ground and shook his head from side to side. Then they are at it again. He mummed to himself. Then he yelled, Okay, let's play hide and seek. I'll be the seeker. He turned to face a big tree, closed his eyes and started counting out loud. One hundred, ninety-nine, ninety-eight, ninety-seven. 99, 98, 97. Sally and Mark stopped arguing looked at each other and ran off in different directions to find a hiding place. In the distance, they could still hear Mark counting. Four, three, two, one, ready or not, here I come. Then he turned and began looking for places where they could be hiding. Finding Sally was easy. He always ran off and then circled back so she would be close to Bez. The safe place to get to before being tugged. Mark looked for the biggest tree and ran towards it. But she wasn't there. I bet she's behind that big bush, he said to himself. So he ran to it and was ready to tag her. But she wasn't there either. As he turned around, he saw James running towards Bays and darted after him. Just before he touched James' shoulder, James tugged the Bays and yelled out Safe! Did you get Sally yet? James asked. No, said Mark. I haven't been able to find her and it's getting late and we need to be heading home. So both boys yelled out. Come on out, Sally. It's late. But there was no reply. Not even a little sneaker from somewhere in the darkness. They yelled again. Come on out, Sally, it's late. Still there was not, no reply from Sally. They began to worry and started searching her for her. As they walked around the area, they called out. Sally, come on, we give up yourself. But no matter where they looked on or how much they called out, called out. 
Sally didn't answer. It was as if she disappeared. Sally was wonder wondering what had happened. All she could remember was crawling under the big trunk of a fallen tree to hide. Now as she looked up, she saw several stars through a small hole above her head. She had fallen into a hole. When she crawled under the tree trunk, Help! she yelled and heard her voice echo through God, what must have been a cave. Help! 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 Did you hear that James Mark said exactly hear that James Mark said excitedly Sally just yelled for help. Keep yelling, Sally, James screamed. That way we can find you. Sally heard her brother and kept the screaming. After a short while the boys were standing next to the big tree trunk. Hey, are you stuck under this tree? asked the James. Kind of, Sally yelled. When I crawled under it to hide, I fell into a cave. Please, help me, I'm scared. It's dark and I can't get out. Mark said, James, you stay with Sally and I will go get my dad. Then he dashed off into the darkness. Don't be scared, James said. I'm r I am right here with you. No, you're not, Sally sobbed. You're up there and I'm down here. As Sally turned in the darkness of the cave, she bumped into something, screamed and began to cry. What's wrong? James yelled. There's something down here with me, Sally replied in a shaky voice. Just then, Mark and his dad came running through the woods. Mark's father knelt down and asked fa Sally if she was okay. He could hear her crying and sobbing. Sally, are you hurt? He asked. No, she said, but I'm scared and there is something down here with me. Stand back, Sally. I am lowering a rope and will be down with you in a second. Mark's dad tied the rope to the tree, found the hole under the tree trunk, wagged a bit and lowered himself into the cave. Sally could see him coming down the rope and stopped crying. Not only was he there, but the cave became brighter from the beam of his flashlight as it danced across the cave's floor floor and woes. As she reached the flower of the cave, floor. he shone the light on Sally and gave her a big hug. Don't be frightened, he said. I'll have you out of here in no time. Then he shone the light around and saw that she had fallen into a small cave and very close to her. In the middle of the cave, was something wrapped in layers of old blankets. Mark, James, there's something down here. I'm going to tie it to the rope, and I want to, I want you to pull it out. Okay, they replied. The boys pulled out the object and tied it. And tied it and let the loose end of the rope fall back into the cave. The cave wasn't deep and Mark's dad boosted Sally over his head so she could crawl out. He, he then grabbed the rope and with a little jump was able to grab the opening and pull himself out. 
Let's go back to my house for a cup of hot tea. I'll call your parents so they aren't worried. And we'll see what treasure Sally found, he said. Rest?